I just want the Chicago Bulls to be respected as a team. I can't believe it's already the series finale of The Last Dance. Guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching all these videos. I've had so much fun making these reactions. If you have enjoyed, please make sure you do leave a like, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Anyways, we are about 10 minutes out of episode nine and 10 of The Last Dance. I, I can't believe it's already over, but I'm super excited to see how they're gonna end it. And I hope you guys enjoy my reaction. It's over. The Last Dance is officially over. 10 episodes, 10 hours. Oh, it was so good. I don't even know where to start. So I'm gonna go back to episode nine and we're gonna kind of go in chronological order. I wrote down some notes, so if you see me looking, that's that's what I'm doing. So they started us off with game four and uh, Reggie Miller and the Pacers taking on, you know, Michael Jordan and the, and the Bulls. And I had no idea that Reggie Miller hit that shot. I, I did not, for some reason, like I've seen like the photo afterwards when he celebrates, but I've never once seen that shot. Incredible shot. Again, a Jordan shot looked like it was going in. It didn't, but that was an incredible series. I thought it was cool the way they captured how, how, real, how good that Pacers team is because I feel like a lot of times, you know, Michael Jordan and the Bulls, they don't have this reputation of beating these great teams when, you know, they show the stat of how many 60-win teams they beat. So then we move on to the Bulls versus Jazz in game one of the 97 finals when, you know, Jordan hits the shot, Byron Russell's talking trash, you know, when he's retired and he gets his revenge. Revenge Again, if there's one thing to learn from this, don't shit talk Michael Jordan. I, I didn't know. Now, now let's start with the Jordan flu or... Uh, or not really flu, but more food poisoning game. Jordan orders a pizza, you know, he feels like shit. He's out there playing the next day, he can barely move, can barely walk, and somehow still wills the Chicago Bulls to win. Again, just absolutely incredible. I think one of the things that's crazy is how low scoring these games were and how many points Jordan scored. For example, like there was one game that was like 79-82. Jordan had 39 points. And in this day and age, you know, games are 105, 110, 115. Like, if you score 100 points, it's, you know, it's not even considered a big deal. Back then, it's like, you know, if you scored 100 points, oh my god. So again, I think the, the amount of points Jordan was scoring compared to how many points are being scored in total kind of gun, goes unnoticed and something that isn't really appreciated. So I thought that was, you know, crazy and something that I noticed throughout the entire documentary. Of course, Kerr's shot was incredible. Uh, we've all seen the the post the championship uh, parade where Kerr, you know, has that incredible speech. I love Steve Kerr. Uh, I, I would love to meet Steve Kerr one day. I think he's an incredible human being. Uh, he always, anytime I see an interview of his, it always puts a smile on my face. So to see him hit that shot was, you know, I couldn't be happier for him. Now I had heard about Rodman leaving uh, you know, after a game in the finals, but I didn't know it was to that extent. I didn't realize it was like right after the game was over. I didn't know he missed a practice. Again, Rodman doing Rodman things, yet, you know, Rodman misses time and then still delivers. It's just classic Dennis Rodman. Pippen playing through the back pain is just sums up, you know, that Chicago Bulls dynasty, you know, the will to not give up. You know, no matter what was going on, these guys just kept fighting, man. It's, it's honestly inspiring. And the thing about, you know, the last 30 seconds is it wasn't just the shot. It was, you know, the bucket he scored before, then Jordan gets the steal and hits the shot in the NBA Finals to, to win his sixth championship. Again, just go things, man. I did find it interesting when he was talking about how, you know, he wished he had the chance to have won seven and the idea of not being able to try still haunts him to this day. The way it all ended, it's just like, you know, you kind of never know what could have been. I mean, who, you know, who knows if they could have won it a seventh time. Jordan seems pretty drained after 98, but it sucks that, that we'll never know. Anyway, guys, I had so much fun watching this. You know, again, I was born a month after they won their six finals. So again, I, you know, I've seen clips, I've seen highlights, but I feel like I have a whole new appreciation for everything Michael Jordan did, not just in basketball, but you know, in the entire sports industry. He paved the way for all of our great athletes, it seems, especially in the basketball world. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you enjoyed, make sure you guys do drop a like, make sure you guys do drop a subscription. It's been your boy and Bunny Sheen. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.